Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. So today I'm going to be showing you my morning basket, what we've had in it for this term one. I just want to let you know that today's video is the first in my term one update series. Today is the morning basket. I'll be doing our group subjects. I will be doing my kids independent work. So I have a fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh grader this year. Can't believe it's already time for me to be showing you what we did in term one for our morning basket. I'm just going to be going through my morning basket. It's here beside me and just talking about the things that we had in it for this term and how we've liked it so far. So just in the order of things here, one of the things we're doing right now is this. We Sing America. We only started this not too long ago. It is part of the book Shark D and E Condensed. And we're just going through some songs, some songs about America and just learning some of those famous songs and maybe songs that we don't know. So we do this about three times a week after our Bible time. So we've been working on that. Next, I have our current read aloud, which is Walk the World's Rim. It goes a little slowly at the beginning, and it's a little bit slow, I'd say, for my kids. But overall, we've been enjoying it. So we've just been going through that. Next, we have been studying Monet, and we will probably continue studying him until about halfway through the year. So we have two books that we're using in studying Monet that my friend also lent me, the one who lent me this Monet portfolio. So she lent us this, Charlotte in Giverney, and we have not started reading this yet because we are reading a different book that she lent us, but that's what that looks like. So we'll continue on. We'll probably add that in in a bit. We have been reading this one, Claude Monet, Sunshine and Water Lilies. This is about Claude, Mo Claude Monet's life, and it shows a lot of his pictures and things. It's been a nice add-on to our art study. So I'm going to show you the portfolio that we're using. So here is our Simply Charlotte Mason portfolio, Monet. And if you've, you've probably seen these before, but they come with a book that talks about their lives. And it also talks about the pictures um, that they did and where those pieces of art can be found. And then there's like maybe 10 to 12 of these beautiful prints in there. So we have been enjoying this. I do like Monet. I like his work. So we've been enjoying this and I really appreciate that my friend lent this to us for this term or this more semester. Like I said, we'll probably do two, two artists a year. So we're still working on that one. So next we have our social emotional learning or what we're doing for that. We're talking about feelings and emotions probably all year. So the first one we started with is this, Us Borns, Questions and Answers about Feelings. This is a lip, Lift the Flat book, but we have enjoyed it. My kids are 10 to 13, almost 14, probably 14 by the time you see this video, but it was still good. We still enjoyed this one. And before I forget, I will link everything I can in the description box below in case you want to check out any of these a little further. Then the one we're working on right now is this one, Created with Emotions, and this is by the Daily Grace Company. So I had to order this from their company. And it is about, it is a Christian perspective of emotions. So I really have liked this one because it just adds that Christian element to learning about feelings and emotions. I still have quite a few of these books to go through, but we are right now working on our second book of this year. Next, I have my placeholder for Word Up. So Word Up it is a TV show. It's online. It's by Compass Classroom. And it's a fun show that talks about the origins of a lot of our language. So Latin and Greek stems. So that has been lots of fun. Each show is about 15 minutes long. And there's a person who's introducing 10 words that come from the Latin root word, and then 10 words that come from the Greek root word. So my kids have really been enjoying that. I will definitely link a link to the description box below. It has been a fun way to add to our vocabulary. So 
that has been fun and we're just going to be doing that all through the year. Next, we have been using Pagu. This is a Holling Clancy Hollings book about a hermit crab and his life from when he's very, very, very tiny to when he gets older. We are about a fourth of the way through, so we're going to continue with that. This is an Ambleside, I believe it's year three science suggestion for one term, but we're just going to be taking our time, probably take us most of the year to finish this. And along with this, we have A Drop of Water by Walter Wick. And this is sort of fun. It has these realistic, real pictures about how, like the attributes of water and how water works. So my kids really enjoy this. These are really short, one or two paragraphs generally, and we just learn about different features of water. So that's really cool. We do these in combination together. I just wanted to jump in here to let you know that I am currently having 20% off everything in my Etsy shop. I have a bunch of advent calendars. I have Christmas coupons. I have homeschool planners. I have activities. I have Bible study journals, things like that. So if you're interested in any of those things, take a look at my shop. I will link in the description box below a link to my shop. And for all of November, I have 20% off everything in the store. Next, I have the Draw Vintage Images by the good and the beautiful. I have level one, two, and I accidentally got five. So these are PDFs that I printed off. And so we have been using this since our first year of homeschooling. Once in a while, I will just pull it out and my children will draw a few of the pictures from either one of these. And that's been in our morning basket rotation this term. So, so if your kids like to draw from something showing them how to draw something, then this might be something you'd want to pick up. Next, I have the Tuttle Twins. This is the one we're reading right now, the food truck fiasco. Actually, we just finished this one. So we've done one, two, three, and four at the recording of this video. I'm sure we'll get through all 11 that I have. I think there are 12 in the series. So this is very libertarian, I believe. So if you are on the libertarian side or conservative, and you don't feel like there should be a lot of government control of things, this would be a great series for you. So my kids, like I said, are 10 to 14, and it is quite simple. I feel like if I didn't start it this year, it would probably be a little too young for them, but at this point, they are enjoying it. So don't wait too long if you're interested in this series. I would say it's perfect for the 10, 11 year old range, maybe even a little bit younger, but I wanted to wait until we were talking about American history before I started introducing these concepts. So I actually have the four books here. So the first one we read here was The Law, and then we had The Miraculous Pencil. We really enjoyed this. It talks about how every piece of the pencil comes to be and how so many people have to work together to create things. One person can't create the pencil on their own, so that was a really good one. Then we had The Creature from Jekyll Island. This is about inflation, so very timely. So we talked a little bit about inflation and how that's affecting us right now. And then we had the food truck fiasco, which is sort of about government imposed laws on different things and how that affects businesses and things like that. So we have been enjoying the Tuttle Twins so far. Next, I have my Mad Libs. So we have the Mad Libs here still. We've been using that for quite a while now feel like we're getting close to the end of these. So probably finish up this term a little bit into next term and we will be done with the two of these that we have and we might take a break for a bit. So I was just cleaning up the mess I made in making this video and I realized I forgot two things. So I'm inserting those now. We have been reading this, How to Eat a Poem, probably for almost two terms now, but we are almost done. I would say I liked our last poetry book better, the 101 poems of whimsy and wonder, I think, but this one's been pretty good too. It has short little poems, and as you can see, we are pretty much done. So we should be done this really soon, and we'll be starting a new poetry book in the next term. And we have continued to read this, Among the Farmyard People by Clara D. Pearson, and we are probably about a third of the way through, so this will probably last us the year. I've been enjoying these, maybe not as much as Among the Forest People and Among the Pond People, but
but so far it's been it's been very much the same Clara D. Pearson just just talks about different animals and just brings them to life and gives them characteristics and you can learn a lot about each animal in her among the blank people so we really enjoy these books and this one probably is not my favorite one but but it's been fine we will continue to use it throughout this year one more thing that I forgot to mention that we're doing I purchased a bundle from bestowing the brush so these are video lessons on how to do brush drawing as well as charcoal and chalk. So this is what we have been working on. I would say we do it every other Friday and I'm not sure what course I got. It was a kind of a bundle. So it might've had all of these together or something like that. I can't remember what the bundle was, but this is something we added as some art to do in our morning basket time. So then in our morning basket time, at the very beginning of our morning basket time, we start with a Bible time. So I alternate between two different things. One is Who is God by Apologia. So here is the textbook for Who is God. And we are probably about the, a fourth of the way through. And we have been enjoying this. It does have a lot, not, not too much to read, I would say but it does have a lot of activities and it's kind of fun. Sometimes they have hands-on activities. So we do that usually Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then when we have school on Tuesday and Thursday, I've been doing sunlight readings. So these sunlight readings are from our B and C condensed. So we have been reading these since the beginning, since we first started homeschooling, but we have done it on and off and we have rotated in other Bible curriculums. So we're just reading through, I believe we're in Kings right now. Um, just we do a reading and then we do a song and memorize a verse. So either we're memorizing a verse from this one here or we're memorizing a verse from our sunlight readings. And then there are two more things that I do during this time and I also alternate these. So on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, when I'm doing Who is God, this takes a bit longer. After I do Who is God and before I start my rotation of my morning basket, I am doing Michael Clay Thompson's Language Arts. So here are the three books that we are currently using with the Language Arts. So we are reading Grammar Island, and this goes from eight parts of speech, it goes into phrases, it goes into clause, and things like that. So we have just completed the eight parts of speech. And then what you do once you've gotten there is you start Practice Island. So Practice Island, has this is the answer key but it has these let's see <clears throat> it has these sentences here and then you're putting in the eight parts of speech and then we haven't learned the next three steps yet so we're just doing this top part here at this time in practice island and we've also from the very beginning of this year we've been using this building language and this is talking about latin stems and talking about spanish and just different parts. So we learned about sub, we learned about re, we learned about d. So different Latin stems and how that affects our language and what words have those things in our language. So that's what I do when I do who is God, then I move into this and then I move into my morning basket rotation. I usually do one to two to three of these things during my morning basket time. Then on the days that I'm doing my sunlight reading, because we have a little extra time, I'm doing Chinese on those days. So here are the resources that I'm using when I'm teaching Chinese. So I have Chinese Made Easy for Kids. Let's see, I have the textbook here. We are on lesson four, I believe. So we're doing about one lesson every two weeks, which is fine, there are 12 lessons, so that will be a year. Here is the workbook, Chinese Made Easy workbook. And we're learning traditional Chinese because they do use simplified in China, but I'm from Taiwan. And I feel like it's like driving stick shift. If you learn the traditional work characters and how to write those characters, you'll be able to read the simplified, but you'll know, because it's a little more detailed to know the traditional characters. And they also have like the radicals and things like that. And it just makes more sense if you understand what those radicals mean and how they're put together. So I don't know if that makes sense. If you know Chinese, that makes sense. But if it, if you don't, maybe, maybe that doesn't make sense. 
Then we are also using this Chinese Beginner 2 songbook. We started this last year and we're just continuing. We're reviewing some of the songs. I just went through and I lined up some of the songs to go with this curriculum that is new for us. And then we were using these last year. These are little readers, Chinese reader books. We, I love these. I picked these up for my daughter when she was, when we adopted her, she was about two or three. And so I was reading to her from these, but these are great phrases vocabulary to learn. So I have like 12 of these booklets. So we're going through these again and reviewing from last year. And then I also have these, I think it's Tuttle Chinese, Tuttle Chinese flashcards. I'll link it below. So I have a bunch of flashcards of the words that we've learned. And so I just have a rotation on how I'm teaching this, what I do, what the order is. I do have a video about that. If you're interested in checking that out, it's called lesson planning. So you can check that out. I will link it in the description box below as well. That's my Chinese language about two days a week. Lastly, I'm going to show you something that I started my morning basket with, but I decided to take it out. So this is Stories of Great Americans for Little Americans. It is a Charlotte Mason, very Charlotte Mason um, resource. It was recommended probably from Ambleside. I'm not sure how I heard about it and I picked it up and I was waiting until we were learning about American history to start using this. I started reading it and as you can see, I divvied it up. I decided on how many pages I would read each time and I was reading it. And then I just felt like we have so much history already. We do a lot of history in our group subjects and I feel like it was just too much, just more of the same information in just a different way. And well, and one thing, I think it was the second reading or something, they talked about the Native Americans serving the explorers dogs dog and my oldest daughter really loves dogs so she thought that was the worst thing ever so she was immediately turned off by this book and I just feel like we have a lot of we have a lot of history already so I just decided to drop this book and spend more time on the rest of our morning basket topics all right so that is everything in my morning basket for term one so excited that we're at the end of the first term and things have gone well and I have enjoyed most of the things in our morning basket and I've only taken out that one item. I would love to hear what are some of your favorite things in your morning basket this term. How is your school year going? I would love to have a chat with you in the comment section below. This video is the first video in all of my end of the term updates. So I will have, I have the morning basket today. I will talk about our group subjects and then I will talk about each of my students curriculum and how things have been going, what we're using, what we've changed, things like that. So if you're interested in something like that, do stick around. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell notification so you're notified of when future videos are up. Thanks for coming today and I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye everyone.